Investing in the undervalued stocks of companies possessing economic moats that trade for less than $5 may appear to be a logical strategy in theory. The notion here is that if a stock is priced at less than $5 per share, often referred to as a penny stock, it becomes more accessible for investors to accumulate a substantial position with a relatively modest investment. The ultimate aim is for this position to appreciate in value over time, as even minor fluctuations in the stock's price can lead to significant gains and profits. However, in practice, investing in penny stocks can be risky. The realm of low price stocks is rife with unproven newcomers, struggling companies managed by decision makers who have made poor choices regarding capital and unstable financial foundations. Penny stocks are typically thinly traded, which exacerbates their volatility. Moreover, the potential for substantial gains goes hand in hand with the possibility of substantial losses. For investors nonetheless interested in acquiring low price stocks, we recommend focusing on higher quality companies whose shares are traded on major exchanges and are priced below $5, while also being undervalued in relation to their intrinsic value. The rationale behind this recommendation is that companies of higher quality generally exhibit greater resilience and possess stronger financial standings and purchasing stocks below their intrinsic value serves as a risk mitigation strategy, often associated with low-priced stocks. Each stock that we analyze will be more undervalued than the last, which means that you have a greater chance of making profits. In total, we will look at five stocks, and to start out our list, we have Sirius XM, which is currently trading at a significant discount, approximately 41% below our calculated fair value of $7.50. The company holds a narrow economic moat, primarily attributed to the cost advantage associated with its satellite radio service. Sirius XM Holdings operates through two distinct segments, which are Sirius XM and Pandora. The Sirius XM service delivers music, talk shows, sports, and news via its satellite radio network, primarily targeting subscribers who pay a fee. Many vehicles in the United States come equipped with pre-installed Sirius XM radios, often accompanied by a 3 to 12 month trial period. The conversion rate to self-pay subscriptions after these trial periods stands at 37%, comprising the majority of new paid subscriptions. Subscribers have a monthly churn rate of 1.5%, indicating an estimated customer lifetime of roughly five years. Sirius shares a portion of the revenue from self-pay subscribers with automakers in the form of loyalty payments. Over the next five years, we anticipate the satellite service will continue to grow, albeit gradually, by converting new and used vehicle owners to self-pay subscriptions to offset churn losses and by offering subscription discounts to retain customers. On the other hand, Pandora, acquired in February 2019, operates as a streaming music platform, providing both an ad-supported radio option and a paid on-demand service. Pandora primarily generates revenue through advertising to users of its radio service, who collectively logged over 10.8 billion listening hours in 2022. The paid-on-demand service, however, had just 6.2 million paid subscribers in the U.S. by the end of 2022, accounting for less than 5% of the estimated 133 million paid music service subscribers in the U.S. as reported by eMarketer. Pandora ventured into podcasting as a means of distinguishing its offerings, although larger competitors like Spotify have already integrated this content into their services. Consequently, the podcasting space has become increasingly crowded, and we do not anticipate a significant upswing in growth or returns as a result of this move. We project that while Pandora may slowly expand its subscriber base over the next five years, the segment will continue to operate at a loss primarily due to royalty payments weighing on operating income. In the number four spot, we have Lloyd's Banking Group, the largest name by market capitalization on our list of undervalued low-priced stocks. It currently trades at a substantial 46% below our estimated fair value of $3.80. We believe that Lloyd's shares have the potential to reach this valuation. Lloyd's economic moat is founded on cost advantages and switching costs. Lloyd's primarily operates within the United Kingdom, with 95% of its assets being domestic, 
Following a substantial restructuring effort initiated in 2011, the bank has transformed into a low-risk domestic retail and commercial bank. It has divested approximately $190 billion in runoff assets and $200 billion in risk-weighted assets, significantly reducing its reliance on wholesale funding. Presently, Lloyds boasts one of the strongest retail franchises in the United Kingdom. In the UK, the mortgage market is experiencing pressure due to challenger banks seeking to gain scale and regulatory ring-fencing measures that have increased liquidity. Although mortgages represent a significant portion of Lloyd's loans to customers, the bank has managed to maintain robust net interest margins. This is attributed to its substantial deposit funding base and its commitment to prioritize margins over loan volume. In response to growing competition in this market segment, Lloyd's has pivoted its focus towards expanding its financial planning offerings, strengthening its credit card loan portfolio, and targeting loan growth among small and medium-sized enterprises. These strategic moves are expected to enhance Lloyd's value proposition for its clients, especially in the context of expanding open banking initiatives. Lloyd's is also actively seeking to diversify its sources of income beyond interest-based revenues as part of its new strategy, which we view positively. In the interim, Lloyd's stands to benefit disproportionately from the ongoing interest rate hike cycle initiated by the Bank of England. Breaking into the top three, we have none other than Sabre's stock, which is currently undervalued by 58%, compared to our fair value estimate of $9. Despite being the smallest company by market capitalization, on our list of the best inexpensive stocks to purchase under $5, Sabre is experiencing a resurgence in demand and profitability as business and international travel recover from economic volatility, while there is notable short-term economic and credit market uncertainty. We anticipate that Sabre will maintain its position in global distribution systems over the next decade. This is driven by its extensive network of airline content and travel agency clients, as well as its strong presence in technology solutions for these airlines and agents. Sabre's GDS air transaction share exceeding 30% is the second largest among the three major companies that collectively dominate the market. In addition to its GDS operations, Sabre is also a leader in delivering technology solutions to travel suppliers. Sabre's GDS benefits from a network advantage, which is the foundation for its narrow moat rating. As more supplier content, primarily airline content, is incorporated into the platform, more travel agents adopt the system. As more travel agents use the platform, suppliers are encouraged to offer additional content. This network advantage is reinforced by technology that seamlessly integrates GDS content with the operational systems of travel agents and the IT solutions of suppliers, resulting in more accurate and easier booking processes. The company's platform's reach is expected to expand as Sabre continues to modernize its technology and seeks to extend its presence among low-cost carriers and in regions where it previously had limited presence, particularly in markets with higher yields than North America. Replicating Sabre's GDS platform would require the aggregation and connection of content from several hundred airlines to a platform that is also linked to travel agents, a process that involves substantial costs and time. Although we acknowledge the significant advantages of GDS aggregation, processing, and back-office capabilities, modern technology architectures like those employed by Etravelli allow end-users to access not only GDS content, but also content from competing platforms, potentially diverting some volume from companies like Sabre. Additionally, there is a risk that larger airlines may establish direct connections with major agencies, although we anticipate these relationships to be the exception rather than the rule, with Sabre still serving as the primary aggregation platform in either scenario. In second place, we have Altice USA's stock, which is currently undervalued. It is trading at a substantial 76% below our fair value estimate of $13. The company has been awarded a narrow economic moat rating due to its efficient scale and cost advantage over its competitors. In recent times, Altis USA has encountered challenges in sustaining revenue growth, particularly when compared to cable industry peers like Comcast and Charter. The company faces intense competition from Verizon, especially in the New York market. Altis USA has set itself apart by pursuing an aggressive network upgrade strategy centered around fiber technology, as opposed to relying on traditional cable networks. 
This approach is expected to significantly reduce free cash flow over the next few years. Nevertheless, we anticipate that the company's networks will remain critical infrastructure components that will generate robust, albeit gradual, cash flow over the long term. Approximately 60% of Altus USA's operations are concentrated in the New York metropolitan area, where favorable demographics historically allowed the firm to achieve high customer penetration rates and substantial revenue per customer. However, this market is also fiercely competitive, with Verizon's network competing across more than half of the territory. Verizon's recent refocusing, as part of a broader corporate restructuring, has resulted in Altus USA losing customers. Nevertheless, Altus USA is responding by upgrading its network to fiber in Verizon areas, effectively eliminating Verizon's network advantage. The remainder of Altus USA's territory covers predominantly smaller markets and rural areas, with less favorable demographics but limited competition. Both customer penetration and revenue per customer were below average before Altus acquired these operations, and we believe these areas still offer growth potential. Altus USA has recently announced plans to extend fiber to some of these markets, a move we consider potentially unnecessary. Similar to its cable industry peers, Altus USA has leveraged its network advantage to consistently enhance data speeds in recent years, securing a significant share of the internet access market in the regions it serves. If anything, the challenges Altus USA has faced in New York and other smaller markets should restrict incremental competition compared to what other cable firms might confront as AT&T and other phone companies expand their own fiber network construction. Lastly, our number one pick is Haynes Brands, which is currently trading at a remarkable 81% below our estimated fair value of $19.70. The company holds a narrow economic moat rating, primarily due to its prominent position in the market for basic innerware, which accounts for approximately 60% of its total sales and spans multiple countries. Notably, Haynes Brands' key innerware brands, such as Haynes & Bonds, have managed to command premium pricing. Although Haynes Brands faces challenges stemming from factors like inflation, a slowdown in apparel demand, higher interest rates, and intense competition in the athleisure market, its dominance in replenishment apparel categories suggests the potential for improved performance post-2023. In May 2021, the company introduced its full potential plan, designed to expand the global presence of the champion brand, reinvigorate growth in innerwear, enhance consumer engagement, and streamline its product portfolio. As part of this initiative, Haynes Brands aims to capitalize on the popularity of champion in North America, Asia, and Europe. While recent results may have been lackluster, we believe Champion has room for expansion, as activewear, including Champion products, has evolved beyond athletic use and is increasingly adopted as lifestyle and fashion brands. Furthermore, Haynes Brands plans to enhance Champion's footwear offerings after gaining control of this product line. Management at Haynes Brands anticipates that Champion's global sales will reach $3.2 billion, an increase from the current approximately $2 billion. However, macroeconomic and industry challenges are likely to postpone the realization of this goal until around 2026. Efficiency in the supply chain is another critical focus for Haynes Brands. Notably, the company has already made significant strides in this area, achieving a 15% increase in manufacturing output over the past five years. Unlike many of its competitors, Haynes Brands predominantly operates its own manufacturing facilities. Over 70% of the more than 2 billion apparel units sold by the company are manufactured in its own facilities or those of dedicated contractors. We believe that a combination of strong pricing strategies and production efficiencies should enable Haynes Brands to achieve operating margins, exceeding 20% for its American innerwear business by 2025, despite the challenging market conditions that have recently impacted sales and margins. If you have watched this far in the video, you must have enjoyed it. So please, press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos on the best penny stocks to buy right now. With that being said, I wish you the best of luck and happy investing.